Hello everyone, today I'm here to do another master review. If you're unfamiliar with master reviews on my channel, it's where I take three of my most recent reads, I try to keep them all in the same genre, and review them all for you in one video. So, so what I do is I talk about the book is about, I tell you what I rated it, what I liked and what I didn't like. Today is a master review full of why contemporary. All of them are pretty recent releases, just kidding, I think two of them came from last year. So. It's, they're all black contemporary, so there you go. They're all within the same genre. As always, I will leave timestamps down below if you want to hear about one particular book over the others. The books I will be talking about today is Hot Dog Girl by Jennifer Dugan, Goodbye Perfect by Sarah Bernard, and Summer of Salt by Katrina Leno. Without further ado, let's begin. So the first book I want to talk about is the most recent release, and that is Hot Dog Girl by Jennifer Dugan. I bought this book last month, and I was very highly anticipating it. It's one of my most anticipated reads of the year, probably for the summer, honestly, and... Sadly, I did not love it. This book follows a character named Eloise Lou, who works at a theme park called like the Magic Castle like theme park. Think of it as not quite big as Disney World, probably around, I don't know, like a, just a smaller theme park that lives within just a really small theme park, not even I would say a moderate size, probably a small one. And Magic Castle is kind of your like kind of beat up theme park. And every summer Lou works there and this is her second year as the dancing hot dog and she has a best friend that works at the carousel. She has a guy that she has a crush on that is a like pirate that does a diving show. His girlfriend is a princess and there's also a prince. So every, a lot of people that work in this magic castle play um dress up and have jobs and stuff like that so basically lou wants this to be the best summer ever before she goes into her senior year and she also learns that this summer magic castle playground is officially closing for good and she's very sad about it because that's where a lot of her memories lie before her mother left and then also with that going on she kind of goes into it with a a hesitation for the summer and she also has a crush like i said on a guy that is like a diving pirate if you will. Nick. Only problem is Nick is seeing a girl and he's been seeing the same girlfriend for a while named Jessa I believe and Lou comes up with the scheme to break them apart and so that that is what this book is all about. Just a summer working at a theme park and I thought that it was going to be just that. One of my guilty pleasures with movies especially is theme park movies. I love The Way Way Back. I love Adventureland. I don't know what it is about theme park movies. I just adore them so I thought reading a book about a theme park would just be amazing and I did enjoy that aspect of the book but that's the only thing I enjoyed. I gave this book a 2 out of 5. Now I don't give those out lightly. <laughs> I rarely give those out because I just don't like doing that but sadly I did not love this book. I Ah, it's so sad because the book sounded amazing, the cover is amazing. I mean, the cover is everything. I want to keep this book forever because of the cover, but I did not love it. So what I didn't love about it was the character Lou. Now, this is going to be a little bit hard to review because... I am 30 years old, so I read a lot of YA, and I'm not within the bracket, I'm not within the age genre that it's really geared towards, so I'm fully aware of that. Now, some YA books, I feel characters are very juvenile and things like that, and I understand because that is their character, that's who they are, that's their age, but some YA books, the characters are very mature, and that's exactly how it is with any 16, 17 year old out there. Some are going to be juvenile, some are going to be mature. I fell on the more mature side when I was 16, 17 because of what happened to me in my life. Like a lot of other 16, 17 year olds, they might be more mature because of what's going on in their life, but some might be juvenile. It's easier for me to read the YA books with a mature YA character, and it's harder for me to read a book with a juvenile YA character. And that's not to say they're acting out of character, they're acting wrong. They're 16, 17. They're young. They have a lot to go on. But Lou was just a hard character to read for me. Not only was she juvenile, I thought she was very selfish. And I don't know if that's like a normal teenage thing. I'm not a teenager, I can't say that. But one of the main reasons I didn't like this book is because Lou's whole agenda for the entire summer was to break a couple up. She really had a crush on this guy named Nick. Nick had been seeing this girl for years and years. Nick was very much in love with this girl, but Lou wanted him. So she wanted to find and scheme a way to break them up so she could be with Nick, which is already a huge red flag. I I don't know why she would think that. That's very selfish of her. Then it gets even more selfish. She decides to make her best friend Seely and her act like they're a couple so they can entice Nick to like, you know, maybe if Lou's in a relationship, he'll want her back because she's unavailable. And that, you know, she kind of forced her best friend to be in a relationship or a fake relationship with her. And her best friend didn't want that. And her best friend was so amazing. She was the strong anchor in this whole book, Seely. And at the end, 
I liked the ending because things wrapped up nicely. But Lou was just very juvenile. She was very selfish. She was very, she didn't care about other people's feelings. She, yes, she wanted to save the magic theme park, whatever. But at the end of the day, she wanted to break a couple up. She wanted to have a couple demise. She made her com she made her best friend do something uncomfortable that her best friend was clearly uncomfortable with doing because of her own reasons, which she didn't even ask Seely about her reasons, about her feelings at all. It's just Lou was the main reason why I didn't like this book. So that's why I gave it a two out of five. Now the reviews are all over the place for this book. I've seen some five star reviews, which is great. I've seen some two star reviews, which I agree with. But at the end of the day, if you like it, that's great. I sadly did not because I just thought the main character was just downright selfish. And that's just how I feel. So moving on, not want to dislike it at all. I went into it wanting to love it a thousand percent, but sadly I didn't. Have Goodbye Perfect by Sarah Bernard. This one got released last year, but I think it got re-released out in the U.S. because this is a U.K. book, if I'm not mistaken, this year. So Goodbye Perfect is one of your more serious YA contemporaries, but it is also very, it's also a light read. It's like a light slash heavy read. I don't know what you want to call it. In this book, we follow a character named Eden. And Eden has a best friend named Bonnie. And basically, Eden wakes up one day and Bonnie has run away with their music teacher. Eden had no... Eden had no idea about this. She never knew a secret relationship was happening. But basically, Eden and Bonnie still talk, and Eden knows where Bonnie is, and the police keep questioning her, but Bonnie asks her to keep quiet about where her and the music teacher are. So Eden does, because that is her best friend, and she wants to uphold her wishes. This whole book is about Eden's struggles of whether or not she wants to tell the truth about where Bonnie is, and, you know, things like that. It also deals with a... a very big age gap romance, a little legal romance at that. It was a very big age gap and it was a teacher with a student, which is <laughs> never a good thing and it's very tricky. So basically I gave this book a four out of five. I really enjoyed it. This is my first Sarah Bernard book and I will definitely be reading more of her books. I like that she takes on such a heavier theme with the book with the whole age gap romance with the illegal romance and the wrongness of it, but puts it in a lighter tone. I think that I thought it just fit this book greatly. I love reading about Eden. Eden was a character that was adopted and she loves her adopted parents but she still doesn't really feel rooted in that family quite yet and you see her struggles with that you see her struggles with her boyfriend you see her struggles with wanting whether or not to tell the true location of where Bonnie is because she wants to help Bonnie but she also wants to make Bonnie happy and Bonnie seems happy with this music teacher but Eden knows it is wrong so this whole book is that basically that's what this book is about. I can't go into more because I don't want to spoil it for you. Would I recommend it? Yes, I think it's great. It's one of the Y contemporaries I don't hear anybody talk about. I don't hear a lot of people talk about Sarah Bernard, but I really enjoyed it. She kind of reminds me writing style the same as Tamaya Ireland Stone, which I also really enjoy. So I would recommend this in case you're looking for a light read, but with your with a heavier tone to it because of, you know, the illegal relationship, how wrong it is, how it's kind of almost kidnapping in a way. It's just, it's very interesting in that regard. So I would recommend this and I did enjoy it. The last book I want to talk about is Summer of Salt by Katrina Leno. This book I finally read this year for Summerathon and I am so happy I did. It is a very short book, so I will not be sharing too much about it because I don't want to spoil it. There's only 250 pages. That's like a blip. It is so magical. It reminds me so much of Practical Magic. Yes, Practical Magic is hokey. I'm fully aware of that, but something about it is just so memorizing to me that I watch it every fall and I fall in love with it even though it's not the best. This just gave me such Practical Magic vibes. So we have this island and it's called By the Sea, this town by the see. Uh, follow a character named Georgina who has a twin named Mary and basically their last name is Fernwen. I don't know. And their family possesses magical powers. Each um, each person in the family has one gift. Their mom can make potions. Like she can make a hangover cure. She can make something truth. She can do anything she can with potions. Mary can float. So she can float like a balloon up in the air. Georgina has not yet gotten her power quite yet. And their 18th birthday is looming and that is like the cutoff of when they're gonna get your power. If you're gonna get a power, you're gonna get it by then. So that's kind of looming. They're also realizing that this is their last summer at By the Sea because the next summer they're gonna, because in the fall they're going to move to the mainland. I don't know what the mainland is. Is it the United States? 
I don't know, but they're going to move to the mainland to go to college. So basically the fo this follows their last summer at By the Sea and it's just a beautiful town. Each summer there is this bird that's actually a Fenwar um, person that has turned into a bird named Annabella and she's this rare exotic bird because she's really a person and she comes to By the Sea every single summer and it brings all these like they call them bird heads out to the island and they come to study this magical bird. So this whole book is about their last summer there and about Georgina and she also meets a girl and it's just adorable. This also has such beautiful and lyrical writing, very descriptive. I love how each different place in By the Sea has a different tone to it. They go to the graveyard and it always feels like late fall there because it has leaves and it feels cooler and it's just a magical book. Like if you are looking for a summer book but with a magical tone to it, this is perfect for that. So I gave this book a 5 out of 5. It's 250 pages but I enjoyed each and every page. The last part of it does get a little bit serious because it talks about a very serious issue. It it really gracefully I thought and overall this book is just so magical and I love how it's 250 pages and that it's just a one and done because it's like I want to go to By the Sea and I want to live there and I want to go see Annabella every year and it's just a lyrical book. So if you are on the fence about reading this, it's only 250 pages and it's got that perfect magic and summer vibes. Like everything about it is just so magical and witchy and I really loved it. So five out of five, highly recommend. So there you have my thoughts on these three books right here. Um, as always, I say with all of my match reviews, each one of these books offers something different. If you want a summer book about a theme park with not the best main character, Hot Dog Girl is your book. If you want a light contemporary book but with a much more deeper and serious like tone, Good by Perfect is great for that. If you want something summery but yet magical and has that witchy vibe, Summer of Salt is great for that as well. So clearly my favorite Summer by the Song. But either way, I would love to hear if you've read any of these books, what you thought about them. I would love to talk about them down in the comments. Thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you in my next video. Bye.